Peggy, this is Axiom Mission Control Center. Please call Houston for a voice check. Houston, this is Station for a voice check. Hey, we hear you loud and clear. Please begin the event. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm AX4 Commander Peggy Whitson, and it's an absolute honor to be here with such an inspiring group of future astronauts from around the world. As someone who has been a significant part of my life in space exploration, I can tell you that the journey to the stars is not just about science and technology. It's also about strength, resilience, and leadership that we bring to the table. Today, we gather to celebrate and discuss the incredible potential of young women pursuing bold things. Each of you represents hope and a testament to what can be achieved when we break barriers and challenge the status quo. As we delve into topics of empowerment and leadership, I encourage you to share your stories, your dreams, and your visions for the future. Together, we can inspire the next generation of women to reach for the stars and beyond. Let's begin. First up, we have, we'll start with Katya and Echazarate. Echazarata from Mexico. Sorry if I mispronounced that too badly. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, can you share with me what led you to become an astronaut? Of course. Hi, Peggy. I'm so excited to hear from you and to see you. This is such a dream come true for me. Congratulations on your mission. I'm cheering the crew on from Earth. My name is Katia Echazarreta, so you didn't say it too badly. <laughs> I'm an electrical engineer okay, from right. UCLA, Johns Hopkins, <laughs> and now George Washington University. I started my career at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab. I also currently run the organization Fundación Espacial, which develops space-related opportunities for Latin America. We have our upcoming training programs taking place in July, where we will be bringing students from all over Latin America to learn about this industry we all love so much. But now to get into what inspired me to become an astronaut, I would say that I've always had such a deep love and fascination for everything related to space, NASA, exploration. My middle name is actually Celeste, so I like to tell people that I just feel like I was truly just born for this and, and born to love this as much as I do. As a child, I used to go outside and make my own maps of the stars. I would memorize the names of the astronauts as well as their stories yours included, of course, particularly the female astronauts who shared similar backgrounds to mine. Those incredible women who have continued to shape my dream, not only as a child, but now also as a young woman. Eventually, when I became an electrical engineer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab and was able to work on incredible missions such as the Perseverance Rover, Europa Clipper, and Spherex, I realized that the dream of reaching the stars myself could be possible for somebody like me. Now, I would say that I'm lucky enough to be able to learn from incredible women like you as I prepare for my second mission. And I've always believed that being one of the first to achieve something is not enough. So for that reason, I think it's important to also lend a hand to all of those people around the world who share a common dream. So for that, I also thank you because I know that you do this constantly. So. Thank you, Peggy, and I'm excited to hear more about how this mission progresses. Yeah, no. All right. Thank you, Katja. That was very inspiring, and I know you'll have a great future in front of you. And now I'd like to ask Sarah Garcia Alonso from Spain, how would you explain the process of going from a scientist to an astronaut to, to young women that wish to be like you? Sarah? Right. I don't know if we lost Sarah or not. But maybe I'll move on and we can come back to our... Hi, Peggy. In. Sarah? Hi, Peggy. This is Sarah. Okay. Sarah. Can you hear me now? Sorry. This is a great opportunity I can, I can. and thrill to speak to you. I'm Sarah Garcia Alonso, a scientist and member of ESA's Astronaut Reserve from Spain with a great passion for science and exploration. My career has been a blend of curiosity-driven research and a commitment to making a tangible impact on society. Although I was never quite sure what I wanted to be when I grew up, neither a scientist nor an astronaut, my desire to learn and contribute to society 
led me to cancer research, where I could advance knowledge and provide hope through groundbreaking solutions. My journey to becoming a member of the East European Astronaut Reserve began with a realization during my research career. Learning about the astronaut role, I discovered it merged my passion for science with the thrill of exploration and innovation. Transitioning to this role meant not only applying my research skills in new dynamic environments, but also embracing the challenges of working with cutting edge technology and diverse international teams. Applying for the last astronaut selection organized by ESA was a once in a lifetime opportunity that I could not pass, offering a unique chance to participate in space missions, carry out advanced scientific projects and contribute to a global perspective, seeing our planet as a borderless blue marble from space. And Peggy, I think we are going to have a loss of signal, an imminent loss of signal, so maybe we can resume later. Connection is back. So as I was saying, Peggy, I would like to wrap up just encouraging aspiring young women in the STEM to embrace uncertainty, pursue lifelong learning, and seize opportunities to make a difference traits that are vital for both scientists and astronauts. My path shows that when you align your career with your core values, curiosity, resilience, and a desire to better the world, the journey is as rewarding as the destination. So thank you, Peggy, and very good luck with your mission. Well, thank you, Sarah. That, those are very inspiring words, and we appreciate your perspective uh, on how to become an astronaut or a, a, a scientist. Now I'd like to ask Amelia Schoenenwald uh, about how people can be more active humani humanitarians in their local and global communities. It is such an honor to speak to you, Peggy. Smile if you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> Thank you for everything you've done so far. So my name is Amelie Schoenenwald. I'm a strategy manager in the private sector. However, I spent about 12 years as a researcher in academia with a special focus on biochemistry, process engineering, and viral proteins. But also, I'm a part of the European Space Agency astronaut class of 2022, and thus, I'm a member of the ESA Astronaut Reserve, and I'm German. <laughs> Before I became a reserve astronaut, I stood on very different ground. In the villages of Uganda, I worked with HIV-positive women, mothers, sisters, and daughters, who taught me what resilience looks like. And together, we built small businesses and support networks so they could stand tall and not just survive. Later, back in Germany, I welcomed refugees, uh, people who had lost everything, yet carried stories, hopes, and incredible strength. Teaching them our language wasn't just about words, it was about connection culture, and belonging. And what I've learned is that humanity thrives when we choose to see each other and really see each other. Space shows you how, how small we are, and you know that better than I do, <laughs> but also how connected we are. And that's where hope lives, in connection. So here's my message. You don't need a rocket to change the world. You just need to show up, to listen, to help one person stand up again, and that's how we build a better Earth, from the ground up. Thank you so much, Peggy. Oh, thank you, Amelia. That was lovely. Finally, I'm going to turn it over to Megan Christian from the UK. Megan, how do you communicate with young women to make complicated scientific subjects exciting? Hi, Peggy. Such a pleasure to, to be here with you today. Um, you know, looking up, dreaming like many young women of maybe one day being on the International Space Station or one of the future space stations myself. So I'm, I'm also a member of the European Space Agency Astronaut Reserve. I studied engineering and then a PhD in nanomaterials for alternative energy applications. And then I moved to Italy to be a materials science researcher. And during that time, I spent a year at Concordia Station in Antarctica doing climate change research. So just like the other women here, I've had a fairly 
broad and varied sort of career and it's really an opportunity to be able to to inspire young women and talk about the many many different opportunities that are available and in the space sector we are lucky because anything to do with space is inherently exciting there's always great imagery for example to share and to capture the imagination and so the key when you're talking to to young women about complicated subjects is storytelling you know how does it relate to their everyday life what does this equation on a piece of paper mean for me in real life and it's important to explain it in a few different ways everybody learns differently and we have to understand that so maybe a hands-on experiment is good or maybe something visual something auditory it's different for everybody so above all it's important to encourage curiosity we need to allow room for questions but not be afraid to say that you don't know i say it all the time when i'm working with children and suggest that we find out the answer together you that's fabulous Thank you so much. You ladies have been amazing today. Thank you for joining uh, this important discussion. Your personal stories and insights have been really invaluable, and I look forward to seeing how our collective efforts will shape the futures of space exploration for people all around the world. Together, we're making history. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants. Oh,